What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we are playing Um Oh. Today we're playing Across the Void from Choices. Now in the last video, apparently someone came on board. How did they get on board? I don't know if it's an assassin or something, I don't know. But <sighs> I don't know what to do. We need to do this fast. And also, the diamonds. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Because we have... Because we have four choices videos we need to do on Wednesday. And we have two on Friday. And, um... Not to mention next week. And I don't know how many diamonds I can, I can save up. But it's just that, um, the diamonds, man, I need to, s need to save them somehow. Hopefully they're, hopefully we can be able to save them. So with that being said, let's dive in. The Atlas is under attack. Can you save the ones you love? I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we can. <sighs> we can do this. Hopefully. Oh, here we go. Chapter 11, Under the Mask. Now playing as Eos. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. The hooded figure holds a sickle-shaped dagger against Lyra's throat as you watch from across the room. The urge to run to her overwhelms you, but the blade at her neck stops you from making any sudden movements. Her eyes find yours as she's helplessly dragged into the corridor. Zeke turns following your gaze, but the figure and Lyra are already gone. Eos, what's wrong? Someone got to Lyra. I'm going after them. Tell Anthony and Admiral Demos to secure the area, but make sure none of the passengers are alerted. We can't risk causing a panic. Understood. Be careful, Eos. You nod, giving, a Ze giving Zeke's shoulder a reassuring squeeze. Then, and dart down the corridor after the abductor. As you race into the corridor, your feet pounding against the floor, the hooded figure looks back and spots you. Stay back! You remove a glowing orange bolo from your belt and prepare to sling the weighted rope toward the assailant. You chuck the bolo as hard as you can and at the hooded figure's legs and watch as it wraps around them, sending them crashing to the ground. Rawr! Got him. Lyra leaps to her feet, stretching her hand out toward you. Eos. Before you can reach her, you see him leaps back up, yanking Lyra through the, f the floor of a nearby room. I'm coming, Lyra. You slam into the control room door as it locks behind the hooded figure. The door doesn't budge. You rub your aching shoulder. You're glancing up at one of the at this fence up just above the room entrance. Might as well get my uniform dirty. You climb up into the vent. Your broad shoulder squeezing against the metal sides as you crawl through the narrow space. How does anyone fit in here? You don't stop until you're directly over the control room. As you start toward the grate, you see the 
A tiny device attaches itself to the wall and set off a laser grid in front of you. Bracing your arms on the sides of the vent, you slowly contort your body over and around the red beams. You hold your breath as you, your limbs barely miss one of, one of the lasers, trying not to hit it as you exhale. Oh. After painstakingly navigating around the laser beam, you jump to the lower part of the vent and over the grate. Too bad no one saw that. Using your foot, you kick open the grate to the control room and drop down inside. Lara is standing in front of a large data screen as her assailant presses the knife against her collarbone. I won't sign it. Neither will I compromise my beliefs to fight you. No matter what you do to me. You don't have a choice. Do it now. The hooded figure's head snaps in your direction as you start towards toward them. So much for the element of surprise. The assailant free hand snakes into their cloak and tosses out an orb around orb. It hovers toward you, jabbing a long needle in your direction. You you open your palm and hit the orb, sending it sending the needle crashing into the wall. Nice try. Yes, watch out. There's another one. As you glance over at Lyra in the confusion, you feel a sharp sting in the back of your neck. The second orb clatters to to the ground behind you. Ugh. A feeling of numbness presses through your body, and you find yourself slumping into the floor with your back against one of the consoles. I can't feel my chest or my arms and legs. And when the peroxide finishes spreading, you won't be able to feel anything. Oh, this can't be happening. You look at Lyra, your eyes wide with fear. Lyra, soon I won't be able to move at all. My body will be paralyzed. I need you to... Just then you hear the sound of a loud explosion followed by a burst of light. Ziggy steps through the flaming doorway with his gun raised and fires a shot at the hooded figure. Get away from them. Ah. The abductor clutches their shoulder, blood pouring from the wound before lodging a grappling hook from their wrist and disappearing into the vent. Eels, what happened? Are you hurt? Lara and Zeke rush over to you and kneel at your side. He's been injected with poison, something called... Pudsakstein? Ah, I've heard of it. Do you know how much he was injected with? You grimace as you p try to point, point to the empty needle on the ground. Over there... Ziggy picks up, up the orb on the ground, then heaves a huge sigh of relief. Ugh, oh, this couldn't have held much. The symptoms should only be temporary. We've just got to make sure you don't fall asleep or and slip into a coma. Ziggy and Lyra's concerned faces hover close to your own. You feel a strange lightness come over you, and the room starts to blur. Whoa. I have to tell you, Lara, you're so pretty. Your flowers smell so nice. You're like a meadow. It seems your brain chemistry has been affected by the drugs as well. I'm glad you're both here with me. I can't feel my body, but I can feel my heart, and it's filled with love. Is he, is he drunk? Well, Admiral Demos was rushes into the room, gun raised. Where's the assailant? They disappeared into the vent. They could be anywhere by now. Hello, Demos. You're so sparkly. Now that we're all here, this is nice, even though I'm filled with poison. As you beam up at Demos, she raises her eyebrow in surprise. I'm coming to... I'm calming the medic. Marshal Alara clearly needs medical attention. I never, I never been better. Don't worry, Admiral. I can handle anything right now. I prefer not to test that theory, Marshal Alara. As Demos sends an alert to Meridian, Ziki whispers to you. 
try to keep it together. He goes, at least in front of your CEO. You struggle against the fog of the poison after you've centered yourself, you nod slowly. Okay, I can do this. Lara lays her hand on yours. Thank you for risking your life for me. You should be thanking Zeke. He did all the work. Your bravery did not go unnoticed, Marshal Sentry. Oh, I didn't do anything special. Yes, you did. You really proved yourself as a marshal today. Lyra rise, rises and, and turns back to the data screen, the hood figure left behind. It's time we destroyed the documents the attacker tried to force me to sign. They would completely negate the ceasefire peace treaties I put in my in place. Without them, no one will be safe on Matara during the talks. Do you have any idea who would gain from hearing you? Maybe if we can decrypt these files, we can find out who hired them. Then there will be nowhere in the galaxy they can hide from us. They had to be a re there had to be a reason my personal guard turned on me. There's so much I don't understand about all this. We have to access these files. If we need if we need a hacker, there's no one better than Admiral Demos for the job. Demos looks up from her calm device at the mention of her name. Hold on. If whoever is behind these pl these plans to replace the real peace treaties with with these documents, that means they have a way to tamper with restricted documents on both sides of the war. We may find a lot more than we bargained for. Are you sure you want to see what's really on those files? Destroy them. War documents are messy. Too many problems. It's not worth it. You feel your head getting heavy and your eyelids starting to close. So tired. Eos, you can't fall asleep. Marine strides into the room with his medical bag. How's he doing? Not good. You've got to help him. A hot liquid pours down your throat and your eyes snap open as steam seeps from your skin. What's happening to me? Why is everything so blurry? Relax. It's serene. It's serene. Syriana. It can remove impurities from the body, including poison. The steam means it's working. Thank the stars. As the poison leaves your body, oh, everything's clear now. Leaves your body and the fog clears, you see Demo's concerned face frowning at her data screen. What's wrong, Admiral? Let the captain know. Let the captain know. Oh, no, he needs to get to the bridge immediately. Oh, come on! You hurry to the bridge only, find, only to find a swarm of fighter ships surrounding the Atlas. We were just headed to the planet. We were not on the wa- Oh no. Okay, first off, we need to get change for this. Okay. All done. Oh no. Mer Meridian strides in behind you. Glad you got my come. He stops short when he spies, spies the fighters. This is even worse than I thought. What kind of ships are these? They're not Vanguard or Jura. I don't recognize the markings. But I recognize danger when I see it. This isn't good. So they're not the Jura, and they're not, well, obviously they're not the Vanguard, but they're not the Jura either. So what are they? Are they aliens? Hey, it's dangerous when I see it. This isn't good. As you silently stare through the viewport, you suddenly become aware of a strange noise. Do you hear beeping? Yeah, it sounds like it's coming from nearby. You rush to the control panel and call up the security system that EOS installed. It scans 
It scans the atlas, finally stopping on the corridor outside the bridge. There's a bomb right, right down the corridor. What? How long has it been in, been there? No idea, but we need to get in, out of there fast. You fill it with the controls while Meridian watches anxiously over your shoulder. We're running out of time, Anthony. I know, it looks like the security system has a function to extract dangerous material from the ship. I'll send a, the bomb toward... Towards... Hmm... One of the enemy ships. You and Marine watch as the bomb pivots and rockets away from the Atlas. And straight into a nearby fire ship, it explodes in a burst of flames. Boom! Great job, Anthony. One down. Who knows how many more to go. Guess that security system came in handy. Yeah, good thing too. It's only when you lower your hands from the controls that you realize you're shaking. Marian gently ra rests his, the hand on your shoulder. Hey, it's okay. You did it. We're safe. You let out a long breath that you didn't realize you were holding. If I'd known a well, bomb diffuser would be part of my duties as captain, I'm not sure I would have taken the job. Let me speak for everyone on this ship when I say I'm glad you did. Uh, no. V, this calls for a quick celebration. Is there a confetti setting somewhere in your circuits? Even better. Um, I can make edible confetti. She shoots out a spray of small rainbow-colored tablets and you hold up your hands to shield your face. Wait a minute, these are just sprink sprinkler springer sprinkles. This is the best I can do. Short notice. Enjoy. Suddenly a scream echoes from down the corridor. The passengers New Marine hurry down the corridor and back to the lounge. You find the lounge in a state of chaos, mass attackers fan out in the into the room and begin firing warning shots as as the guests scatter in terror. Everybody on the ground. Please don't kill us. If you hurt our woman, I'll destroy you. As the assassin fi since fire a few more shots, you and Maria dive behind some chairs. Here's for cover. Soul crawls over to you from behind a nearby love seat. Captain Lara, take the stars. You remain uninjured. We need to get the passengers out of here. Soul, listen. One of the closets is one of the closets in the engineering room has been converted into a panic room. If I clear a path to the door, can you round up the passengers here's and escort them there safely? I will do my best, Captain Nolara. Anthony, how are you going to get them out of here? The assistants are blocking the door. Hmm. Aim the glare dispenser at them. You take a deep breath, then leap up onto the couch, using it as a spring mirror to grab the chandelier floating overhead. Yeah! In one swift motion, you smash the edge of the, of the dispenser against a nearby table. Glare streams out of oh, and floats towards the assassins, sticking to the lenses of their mask. Why is it? Why is everything so sparkling? I can't see. Yes, those creeps will have to wash glare out their clothes for years. I'm sure they will be. That stuff sticks to everything. It seems one of my decorations was... was able to serve a greater purpose than a mere aesthetic fixture. With the assassin typically incapacitated, you call out to the passengers cowering at the end of the lounge. Everyone head for the engineering room. Soul will take you there. The master scrambles toward the door. Before he follows, Soul turns back to you. I fear for the crew's safety and yours. We'll do our best. Someone has to defend the ship. Your courage never ceases to impress me. Soul, I think you're brave too. 
There is no one I trust more with the passengers' lives. Keep them safe. You have my word. You have my word, Captain Laura. Saul so hurries after the passengers, turning back to look at you one more time before disappearing through the doors. Kepler appears at your side. Smart thinking, Cap. The assassins start to regain their composure. One fires a shot that nearly misses you, and the two of you dive behind the sofa. Panic room upgrade? Huh, those things choices told me about did come in handy. Too bad it wasn't it was only a temporary distraction, but at least the passengers are safe. How long do you think we can hold them off? Probably a long be a lot longer if you had the real rep had a real weapon. She unhooks a whip from one of her harnesses and flicks the switch on the handle. The whip suddenly lights up, jumping with elect with an electric current. Why don't you give this a go? Hmm. Okay. Can't wait to see what I can do with this. Kepler chuckles at your excitement. Neither can I. Now it's time we took back your ship. As another wave of assassins rushes through the door, Kepler tosses you the whip. You catch it by the handle. You swing the whip in a wide circle over your head, then cast it at one of the oncoming assassins. The loop closes around them. Booyah! With a flick of your wrist, the encircled assassin is pulled sideways, crashing into the other attackers. A chain reaction of electricity passes through them. What are these guys? Get him, Anthony. I bet they weren't expecting such a shocking turn of events. Really? Jokes? You and Kepler briefly paused to take in the sight of the incapacitated attackers. I can't believe we did that. You're pretty good with that thing. Keep this up and we might be able to kick this scum off our ship after all. Kepler, we make a pretty good team. I think so too. With you at my side, they don't stand a chance. As if on cue, a new wave of attackers pours in, fanning out around the room. Time to kick them back to whatever galaxy they came from. As the battle rages on, you and Kepler continue fighting side by side. Now playing as packs, you weave through the lounge, brawling with the seemingly endless waves of assassins. You punch an attacker squarely in the jaw. You take your stupid black cloak and crawl back to whatever planet you came from. The assassin drops to the floor, but you sense someone approaching behind you. When you roll around, you find yourself face to face with Holmes, who's clutching a pl plant. Holmes, what are you doing? I'm helping to fend off the intruders. I didn't know how. I didn't know you could fight. Oh, I can't, but I'm great at distractions. At that moment, a string of blasts goes off on the other side of the room. Holmes gives a little jump and a yelp, dropping his plant. Maybe we should stick together. I need someone to have my back. Great. Though I doubt there's anything you can't do on your own. The two of you sneak along the viewports until you reach a small group of assassins. Hmm... Close line them with curtains. You grab a curtain hanging from a nearby column and give it a strong tug. The fabric falls to the ground and Holmes picks up the other end. Ready? You run to the left and I'll go right. Got it. The two of you dash across the room, raising the curtain up as you approach the assassins. Aya! Before the assassins can react, they're, they're plowed to the ground by the curtain. Ooh, that's curtains for you. These jokes are lame. Teamwork. You spot Corvus and Argo circled by attackers nearby. Corvus elbows two assassins in the stomach simultaneously. 
two more direct kicks. This brings your score up to 26. You've been making pretty short works or work of the, of these goons yourself, Argo. As if on cue, Argo whirls around you in a cir quick circle with his arms outstretched, toppling several assassins as they collide with his metallic limbs. I'm programmed to understand the needs of every passenger, and what these thugs need is some sense knocked into them. Best robot butler ever. You never cease to amaze me. Suddenly, an attacker rushes at Corvus, their blaster raised just as they pull the trigger. Argo whips around, diving in front of Corvus. I will not permit you to harm him. The plasma, the plasma blast hits Argo in the side of his head, shatters, revealing its, his inner circuits. Oh, I bzz, bzz, Corvus. Argo, no. Ewan Holmes rushes over as Corvus smacks the attacker aside, then gently lowers Argo to the ground. Argo, why'd you have to go and do that? Bzz, I simply could not fathom the idea of a universe without you in it. Tears streak down Corvus's face and he clutches Argo. Holmes turns to you with watery eyes. Pax, there must be something you could do. You can fix anything. You lean closer to Argo's face, trying to avoid the electricity from his exposed circuits. The plasma hit pretty hit pretty close to the, his core processor. I might be able to do a little rewinding to make sure the damage stays contained. If it's not addressed now, his repair circuits will fry and be too dangerous to fix them later. We'd risk wiping his entire memory chip. Does that mean it's possible to save him, Pax? <sighs> we have to save him. You need down next to Argo and gently lift his head. Don't worry, I'm going to make sure you're alright. You take a few tools from your belt and carefully adjust some wiring inside of Argo's head. Watch out. An assassin approaches from behind, speaking his sigh at Corvus. Corvus's, Corvus's eyes emit a, a milky glow as he leaps to his feet and out of the way. You should know an impost can predict any move you can make. We'll see about that. The assailant slices the weapon toward Corvus's feet. But Corvus jumps with ease. I don't have time for this. Corvus jabs the attacker in the neck, and the mass assassin crumples to the ground unconscious. He then kneels beside Argo, nervously watching you repair him. Is he going to be okay? He'll, he'll need a more formal repair later on. I've I made sure his circuits won't get fried before then. I don't know how to thank you. Just take care of him until I can come back. He reaches for Argo's hand and Argo's fingers close around his core. Don't worry, Argo. I've got you. You take a deep breath and look around the room. The decorations are destroyed and the bodies of assassins litter their floor. Why? Who do these invaders think they are? What kind of monsters attack a ship full of innocence? As you, as your gaze sweeps over the open door, you see a flash of movement. An armed armor sitting peeks their head and then quickly dashes away. And where do you think you're going? Think you're doing? You spin through the door chasing after them. In the corridor, you manage to get close enough to reach out and grab the edge of the clear cloak. Get off me! I think you're the one who needs to get off my brother's ship. You give the cloak a forceful tug, and the rest of the assassin's disguise rips off, including their masks, as they cra crash to the ground. Still clutching the cloak in your hand, you shake your head in disbelief. No. You're one of them. A familiar face looks up at you. What? What? 
I'm so sorry, Pax. What? What? Oh my goodness. Initiate status report. Oh, Legends neutral, Atlas good condition, high moral, cr crew high moral, passengers cheerful. Oh my goodness. Zania? Betrayed us? How many more betrayals are we gonna do? How many more betrayals are gonna happen in choices? <sighs> well, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of the videos I put up on my channel, go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video.